You better believe the likes of Triple H and co are hoping the majority of their fanbase never lay eyes on the visual of a beheaded adored babyface, hilariously bad mascots, and giants being taken out like an elephant in the wild. But thanks to this very list, you'll never be able to unsee all of the above and so much more. So you are welcome, I am Gareth, this is What Culture Wrestling, and here are 10 mind-blowingly batch WWE moments you totally forgot about. Number 10, Kurt Tangle shoots Big Show with a tranquilizer dart. These two former WWE champions have found themselves in the middle of their fair share of entirely absurd WWE moments over the years. And that's just together. But while many would likely be quick to remember the absolutely mad sight of Angle being chokeslammed off a balcony by the Giant in April 2004, those same folks often overlook the fact that something even more bizarre occurred on SmackDown between the pair a few months later. With the two feuding heading into that year's No Mercy pay-per-view, Show and Eddie Guerrero took on Angle and Luther Reigns in a main event contest on The Blue Show. The moment Mark Jindrak surprisingly intervened, however, things all got a bit, well, insane. In a move that was apparently the idea of none other than Paul White himself, Angle shockingly revealed a tranquilizer gun he'd stashed under the announce desk to use at exactly the right moment. The time was now! And sure enough, a few too many pumps of the weapon later, Show was darted like an animal in the the zoo, or the wild, or whatever you like. After much surreal wobbling, Angle and his mates then proceeded to give Show a rather uncomfortable trim. Hilariously, that wouldn't even be the last time someone was shot with a dart on WWE TV either, with JBL also being tranquilized by that exact same weapon in 2005. You can literally hear the sound of the creepy billionaire howling in Gorilla. Number 9, The Boogeyman Plays With His Heart With Monday Night Raw going down in glorious Sheffield, England back on November 21st, 2005, WWE WWE obviously felt this was the perfect opportunity to throw one of the oddest versions of London Bridges Falling Down you've ever heard onto the Red Show. As the then WWE Champion John Cena wandered around backstage asking different members of the locker room how they felt about the bald wrestler hunter known as Kurt Angle, an uncomfortably horny face that runs the place managed to bump into a half-naked Candice Michelle, Snitsky and Tomko deep in a friendly massage, and a lunatic with a heart hanging around his neck. And it was that last unexpected meeting that gave birth to the totally freaky rendition of the aforementioned nursery rhyme, accompanied by trademark clock smash, disturbing chuckles, and what appeared to be a river of baby oil exiting the boogeyman's mouth. Only in sports entertainment, eh? Sure, it's not quite as distressing or unfortunately memorable as watching Martin Wright chew a mole off Gillian Hall's face, but this often forgotten surprise Cena greeting from the worm-eating menace still ranks as one of the most surreal cameos in WWE history. Number 8, CM Punk is nearly white out by some falling equipment mid-interview. Not long after cashing in his Money in the Bank contract and earning his first World Heavyweight Championship, The Punker ended up being interviewed by Todd Grisham on Monday Night Raw back in 2008. And as the champ responded to a question about who could be his next challenger, something utterly weird suddenly went down. Out of nowhere, like an RKO, damn it, a piece of filming equipment crashed down in front of the two, with the camera then following a pair of panicked backstage employees as one of the flailing figures let out a desperate, we're live, you idiot. Was this the beginning of a long-running storyline involving Punk having to avoid various backstage accidents? Or a heel in the shadows trying to bring the babyface's run to an end? And uh, no. Instead, all involved bizarrely just got on with the interview like nothing had even happened, while the two employees likely sprinted as far away from Vince McMahon's office as humanly possible. Now, I've got a quick question for you. What's the weirdest backstage interview in wrestling history? Was it the Punker equipment smash or something else? Let me know in the comment section right down below. Number 7, Jack Swagger's Soaring Eagle In the wake of an also quite forgettable World Heavyweight Championship run coming to an end at the now extinct Fatal 4-Way pay-per-view in 2010, WWE decided Jack Swagger needed something to replace said strap around his waist when marching to the ring. Enter the Swagger Soaring Eagle mascot. Said giant bald eagle could regularly be found flapping its wings around the smug All-American as he blasted the state of Oklahoma and rated our superstars. With that latter moment resulting in the big old bird getting ridiculously speared out of the sky on SmackDown. And the strangest part of it all? This swagger sidekick wasn't simply played by an up and coming star trying to learn a thing or two from the more established performers on the WWE roster. Nope, it was none other than former ECW champion Chavo Guerrero making a tit of himself underneath the feathery costume. At least no animals were harmed in the booking of these horrendous angles, though. Unsurprisingly, the mascot shtick did little to nothing for both swagger and Chavo in the end. 
Defender. And this odd bird was ultimately put out of its misery before long. Number six, a monster attacks the Viking Raiders and Street Profits in a dumpster. You have probably understandably done all you can to wipe the often balmy pandemic era events from your tormented minds in the years since the madness of 2020 and 2021. So there's a good chance you'll have little to no memory of that time a dumpster monster nearly ate two raw tag teams live on PLE. The Street Profits and the Viking Raiders had been battling it out on the Red Show for weeks. Not in professional wrestling matches, silly. No, they'd been instead fighting to see who the top team on the brand was, in everything from bowling to golfing competitions, of course. But those strange clashes were merely the appetizers. The true main event of Batch Insanity had been saved for that year's Backlash show. Here, instead of finally battling it out in a match for the Raw Tag Team Championships, the teams opted to take their fight outside before the bell could even ring. And one of the most peculiar sequences in wrestling history soon saw everything from giant ninjas to tentacled beasties crossing paths with the talented units. It was silly, dumb, surreal, and all kinds of confusing. The same Ivar summoning a turkey leg like Mjolnir would be eaten alive by the bloke crushing folks on Raw today. Feels like a lifetime ago. Number five, the hitman is beheaded. The time was 1995, and Bret Hart found himself feuding with both Jerry the King Lawler and his protege Hakushi on WWE programming. The hitman had been screwed by an interfering Hakushi at In Your House 1, but that was the least of his worries by the time May 29th's edition of Monday Night Raw came around. Here, the Japanese menace who cost him against Lawler and took him to the limit at that special event showed off one of the most ludicrous surprises ever to be revealed on WWE television. Vince McMahon's golden egg didn't have anything on this. Before bulldozing John Snakowski that night, Hakushi and his pal Shinja pulled out the severed head of the babyface hero Bret Hart, producing an audible gasp from the justifiably spooked folks in attendance. And a fully healed up Lawler responding with a disappointed, oh wait a minute, it's a fake, makes an already unsettling occurrence that little bit more uncomfortable when revisiting this chilling moment in an often mad mid-90s world of sports entertainment. That's one way to get your baddies booed, I guess. Number four, Big Show challenges for the WWE Championship at WrestleMania 36. With all this recent talk of Drew McIntyre's greatest moment going down in front of an audience of zero back in 2020, it's important to never forget that the Scottish Warriors evening didn't actually end with his conquering of the beast. In a move that still feels like it went down in another corner of the multiverse, WWE attempted to mix things up a little during that year's already unconventional Raw after WrestleMania. Instead of closing out the Red Show with an exciting main event battle boasting some of the company's top full-time stars locked inside of the Performance Center, the company jumped to a weird post-mania interview from the new WWE Champion. Admittedly, a passionate Drew produced a pretty compelling and rather emotional promo, but things then took a turn down Bizarro Lane, when McIntyre's first challenger opted to spoil the title-winning party. Despite not wrestling a singles match since October 2018, here the Big Show was technically main eventing WrestleMania 36 in a bout that remarkably went longer than Drew's Brock Lesnar battle. As this list has already highlighted, the pandemic era contained enough incredibly batch moments to fuel your nightmares for decades. And it's because of the slightly more infamous eye for an eye and swamp fights that stuff like the baffling big show of shows finale has been all but forgotten. Number three, the male stripper tag team. If it wasn't already clear from the content of this list, the folks calling the shots behind the WWE curtain don't half love throwing some truly mad gimmicks into the wrestling world. And one of the more outlandish to have ever strutted down the ramp involved two muscular gentlemen donning suspenders and terrible trousers. Chad Wicks and Tank Tolan, collectively known as the Dicks, were WWE's resident stripping twosome for a while there back in 2005. And the oiled up heels even managed to pick up a victory over Road Warrior Animal and Heidenreich at one point, producing a suitably balmy finish as the former was blinded by baby oil on his way to being rolled up by the dastardly strippers. I've mentioned baby oil way too much in this video. Their easily forgotten time shaking their stuff on the WWE stage was then brought to a sudden end in February 2006, after the two dicks ended up in a backstage brawl, stemming from Wicks being ribbed and earning the team heat in the locker room. It was utterly bonkers while it lasted though. Number two, Friar Ferguson, the Mad Monk. Before eventually settling into the unforgettable for all the wrong reasons role of Bastion Bugger, during his brief spell as part of the WWE machine, Mike Shaw actually debuted another bizarre character that ended up getting the company into a fair bit of unexpected trouble. A few months before going full booger in the summer of 1993, it's largely forgotten that the big man was forced to walk out in front of the Monday Night Raw crowd and batter his 
adversary while dressed as a giant monk. Delivering the oddest backdrop you ever did see in his barefoot and robed getup, the mad friar managed to pick up the W during his perplexing first appearance via holy ass to the face, naturally. The unreal sight of the ass-kicking monk sadly didn't last too long after that squash arrival, though. As WWE panicked after earning some heat from the Catholic Church of New York and decided to delete the character before it ever really got going. Oh, what could have been, eh? And number one, Ryback keeps arriving. It was established pretty early on in Ryback's WWE run that the star had quite the appetite, consistently and memorably begging those in attendance and sitting in Gorilla to feed him more. But you may not be as quick to remember that strange period there, when the big guy was also hungry for all of the attention on one random edition of main events back in January 2014. Despite being very much one half of the inspired Ryback Sultusum at this point, Ryback clearly woke up one morning and decided it was time to take all of the spotlight for himself by storming down the seashell's ramp not once, not twice, but a peculiar four times over the course of one episode. And if that wasn't weird enough, the hulking wrestler then proceeded to just stomp around the ring before making his way to the back after each increasingly mad arrival. No real explanation from him, that was it. Think the Chris Jericho 2012 return, but four times in one evening and with 100% less sparkly sleeves, unfortunately. WWE was seemingly trying to present the big lad as a person dealing with a paranoid personality disorder as noted on commentary. But all they really did was leave those unlucky souls watching on, wondering why they were being forced to watch a human boulder get his particularly intense steps in. How odd. I've been the always mad Gareth from What Culture Wrestling. Cheers for watching this video today, and hopefully we'll see you soon. Bye-bye!